we know uh, uh, how 10,000, 10, 10,000 uh, Ukrainian uh, civilians and soldiers have been victims uh, of this conflict, of violence, but on the other side also 100,000 Russian soldiers. And, uh, and for me, it's um, our bodies that ended up in, uh, uh, in the war machine. Uh, many times, sometimes, uh, also young lives uh, immolated on the altar of uh, uh, old and new irons. And, uh, and it is, this is, by the way, uh, um, how a systematic rearmament uh, can take place. Uh, yet it should be clear that weapons, uh, weapons um, only serve uh, to die and to make people die. And, uh, and the point is, uh, why should we accept death as the inevitable, inevitable solution uh, to conflicts? Uh, a policy that doesn't save life, uh, but rather demands death as a necessary solution is a necropolitics, a politics of death. Um, and it is a, a policy which denies its own task, uh, which uh, renounces itself in favor of war and violence. Uh, so how to stop the war with negotiations, with mediations? And let me put a last question. Why has Europe not assumed a mediating role uh, that means uh, uh, peace negotiations? This is the point for me. Peace negotiations and pacifism would be a very good idea. Unfortunately, we cannot afford it. And uh, I would say that uh, sending weapons is the only way why I'm here today. So that's the only reason. If not Western help with weapons, I may not sit here. My child may be dead for now, if not assistance from, uh, with weapons. We, we would be doomed. You know, so that's just, just the opposite situation. We badly need assistance, military assistance from the West. I think that's quite simple, that if, n if not for the help with weapons and with other military assistance, that, will, that would be more torture chambers, that would be more people died in Kyiv. Kyiv was encircled, but Kyiv was not occupied. That would be all over Ukraine. You know, I, uh, I guess you see these maps that uh, appeared before, before the invasion, because that was, by the way, a long attempt to, uh, to talk to Putin. Macron talked to Putin, Biden talked to Putin, everyone, uh, everyone talked to Putin. No results, absolutely. 28th of February, we have the invasion. That was a very long story. That was months before that. Nothing happened. I want to say to Donatella that I think you are 15% right and 100% wrong. I think that um, all wars are terrible, but I think that we need to make distinctions among wars. I think that it is a primary moral obligation uh, to defend oneself and one's family and one's community. And it is a primary obligation, moral obligation. It is a duty to defend the weak. And neither of these two things can be done without power and sometimes without force or violence. Now, that, what, I, I, you shake your head, but um, I know of no circumstance in which an, a power launched a war of aggression and in the middle of it decided that they'd made a moral mistake and went home. I think that 
everything about pacifism goes against everything we know about the history of the human heart. Generally, pacifism likes to speak in a very high-minded, lofty tone of morality and moralism and so on. My own view is that pacifism, unless the entire world becomes pacifist tomorrow morning, pacifism's consequences are actually immoral. My position is not the position of indifference. Uh, I am on the side of Ukrainian people, but I am also on the side of Russian people. I, ha I am against leadership, against, le uh, against leaders who are uh, not responsible. This is the point. I don't think, as philosopher, that, that, uh, that uh, uh, polemos, that war comes first, uh, and then uh, peace is something that uh, uh, we reach uh, uh, later. I think, uh, and it is uh, the, the, the big result of philosophers like Manuel Levinas and after the Shoah, uh, and the, 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 uh, the idea uh, that, uh, the, uh, that, uh, that peace is the, the relationship with the other. We need the other. And we need today a policy of cohabitation uh, for the European peoples and Ukrainian and Russians are European peoples. And this is for me the point. But let me just say that the, the one thing you omit, you cannot make an equivalence between the Russians and the Ukrainians, except in so far as they're both dying and they're both being killed. What we've learned with uh, Ukraine is that today we have people able to risk their life for freedom. And uh, it's very impressive. It's true in Ukraine, it's true in Taiwan, it's true in Iran, it's true in Venezuela, in Cuba, in many places in the world. And we have uh, in Europe and in the US, uh, I believe, to, yes, to, to, to be uh, able to, uh, to be, uh, um, able to reform our countries and to support freedom too, and to make the necessary changes, because they are huge, to support freedom in the 21st century. So that's, I believe, the, the big lesson of, uh, of Ukraine. And for the, especially for the European, it's a tough lesson.